In this video, we're going to use the trapezoidal approximation to uh, estimate the area underneath the curve. So here we are again with the curve y equals x squared. And if you just look over at figure one, uh, in a previous video, we estimated the area under the curve by using what is called the midpoint approximation. And so we were using rectangles whose height was determined by the midpoint of the base to figure out the approximate area underneath the curve. In figure two, what we're doing in this video is we're no longer using rectangles, but we're going to use uh, trapezoids. So um, I'm going to explain it, explain it this way. Uh, a trapezoid uh, would, well, it would not be a rectangle, although it would still be a quadrilateral. So the height on the left and the height on the right are different, and they both figure into the uh, formula of the area of a trapezoid. So if you remember from your previous studies of geometry, the area of a trapezoid would be equal to um, half uh, <clears throat> times the height times the sum of the two bases. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look at this very carefully here. So if you have a trapezoid that looks like this, and I'm going to try to draw it in the shape of the trapezoid that the trapezoids that we have here, right? So we've got a sort of a longer edge on the right than we do on the left. Um, so now it's a little bit difficult because this is actually your height, right? Normally we would draw a trapezoid like this. Okay, so this would be the height and that's obvious because it's vertical. This would be uh, one base length and this would be your other base length. Okay, but now what we've done is we've taken this and we've rotated it sort of 90 degrees uh, in a counterclockwise direction. And so now our base one is right here and our base two is right there, right? So it's kind of like a trapezoid on its side. So the height doesn't quite make sense because it's horizontal, but it does make sense because it was the height when it was rotated. Um, so let's uh, proceed then um, and figure out the area. So. Again, just like in our previous example, we just have to figure out the areas of the four trapezoids. Now, if you, you might say to me, like, look, this, this right here, this first one right here is not a trapezoid because there is no base length right here. So really it's a, it's a triangle. But what I'm going to say is that it is a trapezoid with a base one length of zero. And I think we can still proceed from there. Okay. So this is part B, the trapezoidal approximation. So the area of a trapezoid is equal to half the height. Now the height again, uh, since it's rotated on its side is 0.25. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna actually write one quarter. Okay, and then um, basically that's half times the height times the sum of the two bases for each of these trapezoids. So let's look at the first one. So the first one we have uh, left base length or base one, if you will. Okay, the base one height or the base one length is evaluated at f at zero, which we know is zero. We can even see on there, but I'm just going to write that in there. And um, base two is going to be the value of the function evaluated at f at one quarter. D dare I do this? Yeah, I think I will actually. I think I will go with fractions. Okay, and then um, now, so that's the first trapezoid. The second trapezoid, okay, would be Base one plus base two would be F at a quarter plus F at a half. Okay, now it looks like I've repeated a quarter here, and yes, I have repeated F at a quarter, but these two here, uh, if you don't mind, uh, let's see, what can I do here? These two here go into the calculation of the area of the first trapezoid. These two here go into the calculation of the second trapezoid, because remember, the calculation of the area of a trapezoid requires these two base lengths, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna reverse those, uh, the red marks there, and then I'm gonna continue. So those are, that's two trapezoids. Uh, we're gonna continue now with the third trapezoid with left base length at 0.5 or half, and right base length at um, <clears throat> uh, three quarters. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Uh, the final trapezoid, left base length at three quarters. And right base length at one. Okay. 
So there's quite a bit of work there. And if we had any more trapezoids, if we had like even four more trapezoids, we'd have double the amount of work, right? So uh, let's bear let's bear with this. So this is one eighth, one half times one, one quarter. Uh, F at zero would of course be zero squared. F at a quarter would be uh, a quarter squared. Uh, okay, one quarter squared. Um, oh, but now I, since I've got F at one quarter here and F at one quarter there, I could just simply, will this work? Just simply erase this and include two of them. So this would be plus two times one quarter squared. And then I'd have two of these as well, so that'd be plus two, um, one half squared. Plus two, three quarters squared. Plus uh, only one f at one, which is one squared. Okay. All right, so let's uh, crunch some numbers here. So I've got one eighth. I uh, don't have to worry about the zero. A quarter squared is one sixteenth times two is another uh, one eighth. A uh, half squared is a quarter times two is a half. Um, three quarters squared would be three sixteenths times two. Uh, sorry, three quarters squared would be nine sixteenths times two would be nine eighths. And then one squared is one, obviously. And when you multiply those together, you end up with, I mean, are we going to do this? Sure, let's go one eighth. This would be one plus four plus nine plus eight over eight. Okay, I hope that works. I got one eighth, four eighths, which is half, nine eighths, which is nine eighths, and eight over eight. So I end up with uh, 10 plus 12 is 22. So 1 8 times 22 over 8 is equal to 22 over 64, uh, aka, can we simplify this, 11 over 32, uh, which is approximately 0. Uh, oh, 1 over 32, which is approximately 11 over 32, 0 0.344. Okay, and that's the trapezoidal approximation. A little bit uh, longer to do than the midpoint or right or left endpoint approximations, but there you have it.